I often use a small oscilloscope in my videos, especially to show things like when a radio is working or not. And this one is, actually this is almost ideal, except that several people have complained that the trace is not bright enough to see. So what I need is one that's small enough to fit without taking up the whole space that I'm trying to video. And so I found another one that is slightly bigger, but I don't think it has all of the knobs and stuff that will get in the way. So let's get to it unpacking it. It comes with two probes, some, you know, different, uh, these are the identifier rings for the probes, a basic something packing list. Looks like a, a uh, yeah, something of an instruction manual. What else do we have back here? Okay, so these are more like probes for a voltmeter. Okay, so we have probes for an oscilloscope, probes for a voltmeter. What is this thing before I move on? Okay, power cord. And let's see if I can get this thing out of here. Okay, so screen's a little bigger than the old one. It's got some buttons, so it's going to be significantly wider, twice as wide. Um, so we'll see in the long run how that plays out. Let me get the box out of the way. And yeah, okay. So we're looking at... Uh, actual scope. Let's, let's zoom out for a second so you can see what I've got going on. I've got it hooked up to my power supply and also I have it fed back into the calibration port. So I've got a signal on here and let's zoom back in so you can see the oscilloscope itself. It has a lot of interesting functions and well it has you know a lot of the typical things so it has uh, an auto. So if I deliberately mess up the display, I can punch this and it'll auto display. It has a run stop up here in the corner. So, oops, push the wrong button. Run stop, so you can see that turn uh, from play to stop. Next to it will appear the uh, second channel if that's available. It tells me it's a square wave that it's outputting. That's the generator. That's the center of this wave. It's not a touch screen. It's on auto. Uh, this, let me get a pointer. That right there tells me it's set to rising trigger on rising. Battery supply. This is the trigger point. This is the wave. It's got a grid. Down here it says frequency 1 kilohertz, so that's the output from the generator. Peak to peak is 25.3 volts, and the MEA is 13 volts. Um, the output on the generator, I believe, is 5. It's set to times 100, 500 uh, microseconds. Yes, I can hardly see that. Okay. And channel 2 is off. So, yeah, channel 2 is not in use. So let's go through some of the buttons. Uh, again, there's auto, stop, single shot. It has a shift, so you can go to auto on the second. Uh, shift will zoom, so we can do that, show you the zoom function. Okay, unzoom. Don't remember what ref is. <laughs> okay, I have to look that up later. Um, then, of course, AC and DC. So it's on AC, DC, channel one, channel two. And again, channel two is off right now. It has a menu. There's a lot of things on the menu. Uh, so frequency, peak to peak means so this is what it's displaying. And you can set any of those. You can also see what's happening over here. You can set these uh, values. I don't remember what TG mode is. The... Uh, Let's see. Oh no, we'll get just get rid of menu. 
uh, 1x, 10x, and the generator. You can set the, what the generator's at. And we can use the up and down arrows to change that value. Uh, generator save is actually a screenshot. 50% jumps the thing up like that. So it shows half the wave. Reset that. This is the uh, digital multimeter. And you go like that and it shows the value. And yes, it's, it's set to, uh, my power supply value is, is set to 3.0. It's not that accurate. So this is showing the value from here. And this works just like my my digital meter so um, it's just added in here into the scope it's kind of interesting frankly i can live without this i would rather have the thing a little bit smaller but you know since i got it okay i'll probably end up using it um select let's see i'll turn off the dmm select oh yeah okay so you can do these different functions diode test capacitor set the different values for the uh for the voltmeter the uh you can set the millivolts for channel one so i can change the the units here on the grid and of course i can change the time base on the grid as well you can see that and then you can do the same for the uh, channel two uh, you can do things like shift the x y and all uh, i'm not going to go into terrible detail there's another gentleman who's already put together a review on this and he did an excellent job and that's why i bought this but for those people who watch my channel, they know me. Uh, I'm not getting any money for doing this. This is strictly something I bought for my own use. And so, yeah, uh, my opinion on this is so far, I really like it. It's the right size. It does all the right things. Yeah, it's not a, you know, it's not a $2,000 scope. But on the other hand, uh, for the price, it does a whole lot of good stuff. And yeah, I'm happy I bought it. So let me say that. That's kind of my review of that and my opinion on it. Okay, well, that's it for a quick overview of this digital oscilloscope. I hope you found that useful and interesting in your home electronics work.